finite state automata. So what is it, how to use it? Uh, that's not the main topic of this course, so there is another, another lecture courses which covers all, all these strange theorems and uh, like, like about formal languages and all. So uh, in this course, we just uh, cover some basics about what is finite state automata and how to use it in algorithmic problems. So uh, finite state automata is basically a graph which contains some states. Uh, so, so it's a graph. So each state is basically a vertex of a graph. Something like that. Uh, one state is a starting state. So one state is marked as a starting state. Let's so that's the starting state of the automaton. And there are transitions. So from each state, there are transitions to other state. And each transition is marked as some letter. A, let's see, A here and, and B here and let's see, here and something, or something like that. Mm. Let's, let's add one more. So there, so there are some transitions. Uh, also some states are marked as um, terminal states. So some states are terminal states. Let's say let's say this state is terminal state. That's all. So you have some graph. Each node of this graph is a state of the uh, of the state automaton, and there are transitions. So from each state, you can move to other state, uh, and each transition is marked with some letter from your alphabet. Uh, let's say again. Let's we have some fixed a fixed number of letters in the alphabet, so the number of letters is always some, some constant. In this example, for example, we have only two letters, we have A and B. Usually that's quite enough. Let's go. So, <laughs> go. so how to use finite automata? automaton? Uh, it's works pretty simple. So you're given some string. Uh, for example, let's say, let's see, let's say, say something like this. So given some string, uh, and when you give this state to automaton, it makes very simple operations. So it starts in the starting state, so you start here, and then each time you take a next letter from your string and move uh, to, to, to the next state using the transition which marked this, this letter. So for example, from here you, you have letter A, so you move here, so now you're staying here. Now from here you have letter A, so you move here. Now from now you have letter B, so you move here. Uh, then you have another B, so you move back here. And finally you have letter A, so you move to the next thing. So if in the end you're standing in the terminal state. It means that this automaton accepts this list, this string. So uh, we say this string is accepted by this automaton if you follow the transitions marked with these letters, and in the end you end up in, in some terminal state. It's very simple. Uh, that's all. So most of the time we will talk about deterministic finite automaton. So so deterministic finite automaton is. Uh, Automaton when you have at most one transition for each given letter. So for each state, you have at most one transition marked with each letter from your alphabet. So you may have at least one transition marked with A and at least one transition marked with B. Deterministic. Uh, sometimes you have non-deterministic finite state automatons, uh, automata, strange language. Okay, so sometimes you have non-deterministic uh, automata. It's it's the, when you have several transitions marked with the same letter. Uh, they are quite powerful, but they are not that useful usually 
in the algorithms because in the algorithms you kind of want to find uh, what transition to follow. If, if you have several possible transitions, you, you need somehow to choose these transitions and usually this complicated. So in this lecture we'll mostly talk about deterministic finite automaton. But in practice sometimes you need to, to, to build some, some non-deterministic auto, auto, automaton. And again this is not the course about automata so I'll just cover the, all the basics. Uh, basically what you can do is from any non-deterministic automata automaton you can uh, make the equivalent deterministic automaton but this number of states in the deterministic automaton will be exponential. So if you have non-deterministic automaton you can make the same deterministic automaton but the number of states will be like 2 in power of n where n is the number of states in non-deterministic automaton. So, uh, all the problems with non-deterministic automaton usually are and like usually you need exponential time to solve. Uh, so we will in, in this lecture we will mostly need only deterministic automaton. And for, for deterministic automata there are uh, many interesting algorithms and we will discuss them today. Yeah. <laughs> no, they are quite useful. For example, uh, what you can do uh, if you uh, it, uh, automata is like a bridge from graph to string from 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 string problems to graph problems. So you have some problem you have some problem about strings. Uh, you build this automaton, and now you have some problem about graphs. And we learn a lot of good algorithms about graphs. So that's basically how you how you reduce your problem from string problem to graph problem. So it's, it's you, sometimes it's quite useful. For example, what you can do. Okay, let, let's start with some simple stuff. Uh, <clears throat> let's, for example, you want to calculate the you given some language. So the set of string is a language in this terminology. Okay, so you are given some automaton. Uh, this automaton give you some set of different strings, right? So let's see uh, let's see which strings are actually accepted by this automaton. For example. This automaton accepts different strings. So, for example, you have string, let's say a a a, or you can string can string a a a b. Let's use this. So you can use a a then a b a a something like this. It's always accept also accepted by this automaton. Uh, for example, you, can, you must say something. B a is accepted by this automaton. Uh, b b a is b b b a is accepted by this automaton, and so on. So there is a set of strings accepted by this automaton. So each automaton is defined some set of strings. Uh, yes, the set of strings usually represents a language. So so each automaton defines some language. Uh, okay, I, I don't want to go deep in this theory, but uh, this, uh, this language is called a regular language. It's not important today. Um, I've gotten here seventy shorts. No, I don't. Said. Mm. Ah. Uh, what you can do when you when you can define your language as an automaton, you can, for example, calcul calculate the total number of strings of the given length. So imagine you have an automaton. It defines some set of strings, and you want to count the number of strings of length n. Uh, st Ring of length uh, n. So given some number n, and you want to find the total number of different strings accepted by this automaton. So you, you, you define your language as an automaton, and you want to find the number of different strings of length n in your language. How can you do it? You just move from the string problem to the graph problem. Each string accepted by automaton is just a path yeah so each string is a path from starting state to some terminal states so to one of the terminal states yeah so you just need to calculate so it is equal to number of paths uh, from s uh, to one of to one one of terminate one of terminal states so t is a set of terminal states okay uh, of length n 
Лена ГТХ. So now just now just make the some graph problem. So for, 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 the, for the given graph, you need to calculate the number of paths of the given length. You can do it using dynamic programming. Like similar like in Bellman Ford algorithm we discussed, you just calculate the dynamic programming like D uh, VK is number of paths uh, to vertex V of length K. Yeah. So we make the same dynamic programming like in Bell Bellman Ford algorithm, and then use this dynamic programming to calculate the number of strings in this language. So that's usually how, how these two problems are connected. So you have some string problems, we're so given some... Usually this language can be defined as a regular expression or something like that. So you, ha you have some, some language defined by some, I don't know, some constraints of your problem. And you can, you, you can define this language as some automaton. So you find a way how to build automaton which describes your language. Yeah. So after this, you can, you, you can simply calculate the number of paths in this graph. And when you calculate number of paths, each path corresponds to some string. So when you calculate number of paths, you calculate number of strings. Something like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That, that, that's, that, that's usually why it's important. So, oh, you can solve some, some problems. You can find uh, you can some, find something. Some, you can find something like lexicographically smallest path, or you can find uh, I don't know. You can you, you can have two different automata and then make something like product of this automata automata and build something like uh, intersection of two given languages. <clears throat> so and so on. So so there are multiple problems can be solved by 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 finite state automata. Uh, usually the problem is up be, be, be before you uh, before you apply one of these techniques. Uh, the main problem is how to construct this automaton. So you're given you're given some definition of your language, and you want from this definition go to the automaton. That's that's usually the main trick in all these problems. After you build this automaton, Everything else is usually simple. So you just make some dynamic programming, make some graph algorithm and so on, and you solve the problem. Okay. <clears throat> nice. Uh, so what I, to, what I want to discuss today is how to apply the algorithms from the previous lecture to build the optimal automata. Uh, go. So what we will try to do now, we will try to build the automaton which accepts all the strings which contain given string s as a substring. So given string s and we want to build automaton which accepts uh, strings uh, string s there is such that uh, S is a substring of T. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to what, what I want to build. So, so you are given again, you're given some string. Mm -hmm. And in, in, in previous lecture we discussed how to find the substring in a given text. Uh, what I want to do now is to construct the automaton which accepts only texts which contain the given string. Mm -hmm. Again, this, this, basically the same problem we discussed last time, but now we will we'll try not only define the algorithm just to find if the given string contains, but we'll build the automaton which solves the same problem. And that's interesting because again, after you build this automaton, you can apply some dynamic programming to this automaton. So you can, for example, calculate the total number of all different texts which contain the given string and so on. So again, automaton is, is a very simple uh, way to define the given language. So if you can define your language automaton, then you can solve multiple problems by dynamic programming and stuff. You just stop saying everything is clear, so I'm just continuing to, to say 
the same thing over and over again. Okay. Okay, I hope it's clear enough. Now, how to build this automaton? Any ideas? Uh, no, yeah, let's, let's have some string. Let's see, have some string. Let's see, A, B, B, A, B, something like that. Uh, it's too boring. Let's see. Let's add one more A here. Yeah, good enough. So let's have some string. We want to build automaton which accepts every text which have this substring. Well, let's try to do it. So how to start? No, basically, if the t equal to s, uh, then this string should, should be accepted by the automaton. So uh, at least our automaton should contain a path, uh, like from starting state, let's check this, this is starting state. Uh, so at least we need to have this path in our automaton from starting state to the terminal state. So let's build this path. A, B, B, A, B, A. Okay, at least we need at least we need this path, right? Mm -hmm. Again, string S must be accepted by this automaton by definition. So in the in the automaton we, we need at least to have this path. Now let's let's add up. Other transitions to this to, to this automaton. So, what other transitions should we do? So, uh, before we add other transitions, let's think about what these states are corresponds for. So, each of these states corresponds to some some something interesting. So, for example, if you're standing here, so so if you're standing here, what does it mean? It means that you read your text. And at some point, you stand in here, you read this part of the text. And if you continue from this point and read letters A, B, and A, you will end up in the terminal state. So if from this point you read letters A, B, and A, mm -hmm. so again, if you're standing here, if you read all this prefix of the string T, and now your current state is this. So in this state, if you continue to read the string T and read the letters A, B, and A, you will find yourself in the terminal state. Uh -huh. What does it mean? It means if you read the state, you will have the letter S in your string T. It means that if you're standing here and you're in this state, then you have this prefix already read before. So if you're standing here with this state, it means that the last letters you read were A, B, and B. Right. So basically, each state of this automaton uh, corresponds to some prefix of string S. So if you're standing here, then the last prefix you read was A. Uh, if you're standing here, then the last prefix you read was AB, and so on. So e each of these states corresponds to some prefix of this. Now, basically, what, what prefix do you need to remember? You need to remember the longest possible prefix of string S. That's that's, that's all. That's, that's the meaning of these states. So each state corresponds to the maximal prefix of string S, which you already read by this point. So you're standing here, and the state corresponds to, to max to, to, to those prefix of maximal length of string S, which you read before this point. <laughs> so now when, when we understand what is the meaning of all the states, let's try to build all the transitions. For example, if you're standing here. So if you're standing here, so the last prefix you read was A. So I'm standing here and the prefix is A. If you read letter B, then you will go to prefix AB. But what happens if you read the, the letter A in this point? So if you have letter A here, what will be the longest possible prefix of string S which we already read? It will be prefix A, right? So if we're standing here and we read letter A, we will have the prefix A again. So from here, we need to make a loop like this. Mm -hmm. And so on. Now we do the same for all other states. 
if we're standing here and we read the letter A. So if we read the letter B, we go here. If we read the letter A, again, we have we have A, B, and then read letter A. What is the maximal possible prefix of string S? Uh, no, B, A is not a prefix of S. A is a prefix of S. So if we're standing here and we read letter A, we need to move to state 1, like here. Mm -hmm. Now, if we're standing here and we read letter B, what happens? So we're standing here, so we have letter A, B, B. And we read letter B. What will be the maximal prefix of S? Mm -hmm. I'm just giving you some time. <laughs> yes. If we if read letter B, then no prefix of S is here. So BBB is not prefix, BB is not prefix, B is not prefix. So we go to, to the sensor. So this is the empty prefix. Yeah, empty prefix refers to this state. So if we stand in here and look at the letter B, we just go here. And so on. So from here, if we read, if we read letter A, we have A, B, B, A, A. Longest prefix is A, so we go here. From here, if we read B, so we have A, B, B, A, B, and B. So longest prefix is A, B, B, so we go here. That's all. Now what happens in the end? In the end, well, no, if we want to find out what which accepts is later, we kind of want to stuck in this terminal state. So if we reach this terminal state, uh, we find some string s in three. So if at some point we reach this terminal state in the middle of this string t, so it means that we are standing here and here is a string s. Yeah? No, if you want to if you want to solve this problem then we kind of want to stuck in this terminal state. Yeah? So we well, if we uh, at, at some point go to terminal states, we want to stack in this terminal states forever. And it's done very easily, we just make a loop in this terminal state. Uh, by both A and B. And this simple trick will just uh, force you to stack in this terminal states forever. So if at some point you have string S here, then you will go to these terminal states, and then in the rest of this string, you will just stack in these terminal states. In the terminal state. So the in the end, so when you again when you read all this suffix and go here, you still will be in this terminal state. Mm -hmm. So this automaton accepts a, a, any text which contains this s as a substring. Because if the substring is here, then we when we when we move here, we will have we will move to this terminal state, and when we reach the rest of the rest of the string, we will still be in this terminal state. But um, that's all. That's all. That's a, that, that's how you build this automaton. Now let's see. Uh, what's interesting? Interesting is the size of this automaton is linear actually. Yeah. So the number of states of this automaton is linear. And the number of edges is the same as number of uh, states multiplied by the alphabet. But it, if the alphabet has some constant number of letters, then the number of edges is also linear, right? So the, the size of this automaton is linear. Size. Uh. If size of something is linear, it's usually a good thing to think to, to think about how to construct it faster. If you, uh, if you construct it just like like we did here, so we so we try every string, try to add every every character, and then try to all the suffixes, check if this suffix is a prefix and so on. So so it's it's not it's it's pretty slow. So but if the structure you want to build is linear, usually it's a good thing to think about how how to construct faster than we did so. Uh, in this case, we can construct this automaton in linear time. 
That's interesting. So let's try to build this automaton in linear time. Yep, to stuck. Yes, I'm not good in English. Sorry, I'm Russian. How to how to say correct in English? I don't know. I, I don't know. I I I learned English from English from Hollywood movies, so maybe. Some of my terminology is not uh, that classic. To be stuck is an acceptance state. Ah, to be stuck is fine, but to stuck is... Okay, okay got, it. got it. Thank you. Now, I want to build this automaton in, le in linear time. Go. Again, we, st we start by, by, by building this path. So we're just building a path with transitions corresponding to letters of the string S. Now, how to build all other transitions in this automaton? Uh, well, let's see. So if we're standing in some state here. So let's have some. So we're standing in, in some state I. Well, let's see, from zero to I. So if we're standing in state i, what's going on here? Uh, we try to add some, some, some one letter to this prefix. So if, so if we're standing in state i again, it means uh -huh, uh, that we're in here, and now we read the prefix of length i of string s. Right? Nice. So that's our current state. So we're standing here, and the last characters we read were the, the prefix of string s of length i. So how to make transitions? So if we add character x here, so if this character is x, <coughs> what's going on? If this x is the next character of string s, then we move to the next state. That's simple. If it is not, then what we need to do? We need to find some string here which is a prefix of string s. And we need to find the longest such string. So we need to find the longest string, uh, which is a suffix of this prefix plus character x, and it is a prefix of string s. Again, we do it like we did in previous lecture. Uh, so this last character must be x, and this string is some suffix of this string and some prefix of s. So we'll do the same thing like like, like previous lecture. We'll try to find the longest suffix of this prefix. Again, this is a prefix of s. Yeah? So we need to find the longest suffix of this prefix so we can add letter x and still have some prefix of s. Okay. Let's try to do it. So let's build the prefix function from knut morris prath algorithm, like in previous lecture. And now let's do the following. So we'll iterate for all i, let's say, from 0 to n minus 1. So let's iterate for all possible states. Let's iterate for all letters for c in alphabet. It's pseudo code, okay? So we iterate over all states except the last state and over all uh, characters from the alphabet, alphabet. And now we make a transition. So uh, how to find the transition? So let's let's say the length of this prefix is k. So we need to find the 
longest suffix of this string of length i, which is a prefix of string s, and which have character x here. So we do it like, like, like in the previous lecture, like in knut morris path algorithm. We say that the k is the length of this string. We start from i. And now just decrease this length until we find the prefix which have letter x after this prefix. So while, again, this is just copy from the knut morris path algorithm. While k is at least 0, and the character on position k is not x, we move to the next prefix. Again, this, this array p is from the knuth morris path algorithm. Yeah. That's all. And now we just move to the state which responds to this k plus 1. So let's say it's usually called as delta. Delta is the function which responds is right, which say from this state to this character what will be the next state. So the move from state i by character c will be k plus 1. Hmm. Is it good enough? What do you think? The first, uh, is it clear that this algorithm is actually correct? Again, let's, let's prove this algorithm is correct. So we're standing in some state. So our state is corresponds to some prefix of string s. We want to find the longest suffix of this prefix. Yes, with this k, such that this prefix, prefix can be extended with this, this letter x. So we iterate all the suffixes, uh, which are also the prefixes, yeah, and find the first one, which have letter x here. If we find this letter x, we add this letter x, so the length will be k plus 1. And this, this basically the same reasoning like in the, in the knuth morris platform. Mm -hmm. So this algorithm is definitely correct. What will be the time complexity? What do you think? Again, here we have two loops. Yeah? So here we have n iterations, here we have sigma iterations. Let's say that, that, that the sigma is a constant, so, so here we have some constant. Yeah? Uh, what about this while? The most interesting thing about this, uh, all this algorithm is actually this while loop. So everything else is basically linear except this while loop. So what about this while loop? What, what do you think? Yeah, it looks similar to knuth morris path algorithm. But it's actually different. Well, if you try to apply the same reasoning from the knuth morris path algorithm, uh, you will have a problem. Because in knuth morris path algorithm, we each time we start from, so this k is the position from the previous iteration of knuth morris path algorithm. Yeah? So in knuth morris path algorithm, we, next, we make this iteration, make this k plus 1, and then we start from the position k plus 1 here. But here we don't start from position k plus 1, here we start from position i. So each time we, we start from the position i. And it, 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 it may be so that it, it, if you start from position i, you may each time have a lot of number of iterations of this loop. Because you, you start from this position, go to, 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 to the beginning. Now start from the next position, again go to, to the beginning, and so on. So you can easily build a test when the time complexity is not linear. Is it clear how to build this test? Well, let's try. So, uh, how to build a bad test for this algorithm? We need to build uh, such a string s, so the number of iterations of this loop is, is big. So we want to to uh, every prefix have a lot of suffixes which ha which are also prefixes of the string. Yeah. So we want this sequence of string will be uh, be as long as possible. How to build such string? 
Again, I, I, want, I, I want to build a string so that for each prefix, every its suffix is also a prefix. So I want all these strings to be equal to the corresponding prefixes. How to build such, such strings? Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Don't scream. Don't scream. That's right. <laughs> yes, you just build a string of, of, of the same letter. So if you have string A, 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 like this. So if you build a string, string like this, <coughs> uh, then each time you do the following. So you're standing in some states here. So, so if you're standing in this state, and th this is your current state here. Yeah? So this string of five A's. And now you have letter B. So, so this is your current state, yeah? And now you have letter B here. So you want to make a transition from this state by this letter K, B. What will happen? Uh, you, you will see that the next letter is not B. So you will try the next possible suffix. Next possible suffix is one letter shorter. You try to add letter B here. It's not B. So you try the next suffix and so on. So you make n iterations of this loop. And it happens in, in every iteration of this outer loop. So in, in every iteration of this outer loop, here you start from position i, try all the positions to the zero. They all fail. So you say that the transition is to, 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 to the state zero and so on. Mm -hmm. So that's the best case for this algorithm. So in this, so this algorithm, uh, let's see, that the complexity is n squared actually. No, multiply by, by, by the number of letters, it doesn't matter. No, well, let's add, okay, let's, let's add the size of the alphabet here, just for clarity. Uh, so it's not linear. Can we improve it to, to be linear? It's actually easy. It's almost true. We just need to make a small improvement, actually. Yes. Uh, the, 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 the solution is very simple. We need to reuse the previously uh, calculated transitions. So let's see what's going on here. Yeah. Let's move here. So we have this current state. We try to add letter B. We try to add letter B to this prefix, and it is not. It is not here. So here is A. Here is B. So we need to find some shorter suffix. So we need to find some suffix, which is a prefix, and so on. So we try the longest one. Uh, try this. So for, for for this prefix, we need to find the shorter, so the, the the longest is prefix, which can be extended with letter B. But we already calculated it. When we calculated the transition from this state, we already know these longest suffix because we already calculated when we uh, calculate the same thing for this state. So let's just reuse it. So here, I, yeah, let's just fix this, let me just fix this, yeah. So again, if the next letter is good, so, so if, let's say if, if my letter I is the same as uh, C, then we just say the transition from uh, i by c is i plus 1. If not, then we need to make a sh we need to take some shorter sh shorter prefix, which is suffix of our current prefix. So let's take the, sh the longest one. It will be p of i. And just make the transition to the same state. So i c will be the same as transition from p i by the same character c. That's all. Now it's definitely linear. Yeah. <laughs> Since we don't have this while. Yeah. And that, 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 that's a linear time solution. That's all. That's how you build the, the automaton for the given string. Uh, and next lecture we'll do the same for the multiple strings, right? Now, um, let's improve it just a little bit. Just again, it, it, it will be useful in the next lecture. Uh, what I want to do, I want to improve it just a little bit. Uh, uh, so 
before you run this algorithm, you need to calculate this prefix function. Yeah? Uh, so you run knut morris pratt algorithm to calculate this prefix function. You can avoid this. You can calculate this prefix function uh, right inside this loop. So what we'll do, we will just, so again, again, that's, that's the perfectly normal solution. You can do it like this. You run KMP algorithm and then run this algorithm. It will work perfectly fine. But you actually don't need this KMP step. You can calculate this prefix function right inside this for loop. Uh, you can do it like this. Here. So how to how to calculate prefix function? Uh, let's say p of i plus one. Let's keep p of i plus one. Right. So I want to add this the same character yeah, plus one, just for simplicity. Yeah, good enough. So how how to calculate prefix function inside the same loop? Again, we're standing here. Uh, so what, what what is the prefix function? So this is string s. We're standing here. So that's prefix of size i. That's the next character. That's character of in position i from zero to i. So that's the prefix of size i plus one. I want to find the longest suffix of this string, which is also a prefix of this string. So I want to find this string, which is equal to this string. My claim is it's very easy. We already calculated it. Uh, right? You need to take this string and add character s x to this string. So now you, you, you need to take some prefix, which is also a suffix of the prefix of size i minus one. I i actually i yeah. So you, you need to say so you need to take this string. This string is prefix and suffix of the prefix of size i, and add this character x. To, to, to this position. So the length of this string will be p of i. And now we just need to add x to this string of size p of i. And this is just a transition in our automaton. We already calculated it. So it just be uh, the transition from state p of i by the character in this position is s of i. Is correct. <laughs> Let me check. It's almost. It's it's it, it, it's almost correct. Yeah. yeah. It will be strange in the first step when when i equal to zero. And then here we have minus one. So you transition from minus one to any state. So. P of one should be always equal to, z, to to one. Yeah, can you, you can do it if i is greater than zero. So in the first step, you will have something strange, yeah, because p of zero equal to minus one. Yeah. So in the first step of this loop, you will have something strange. You can redefine just transition from minus one by any character to, to zero, but up to you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's all. So so so. Again, the, 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 this algorithm builds uh, this automaton and also it builds the prefix function for the given string. No. Actually, KMP algorithm is a little bit more powerful because it doesn't have this um, factor of uh, size of the alphabet. So in, uh, in, in knut morris path algorithm, it can be used even if your alphabet is big. And we did it. Ah, oh, we didn't it. Okay, we, we will do it in the home task. So, uh, so Knuth-Morris-Pratt algorithm can be used even if the size alphabet is is big. 
Uh, this algorithm actually uses the fact that the size of an alphabet is small. But if you have some fixed alphabet, then it's fine to use this algorithm instead of KMP. Okay. Oh, spent too much time. Clear enough. I will erase this. Can I erase this half of the board? Cool. So the next thing. Uh, the, what's an advantage? Uh, again, the, what, what is the advantage? When you build this, the, 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 the automaton, you can calculate something. So, again, if you just need to find the substring, you just use KMP and it's fine. Uh, but if you have something, some, some more complicated problem, for example, you need to calculate the number of strings which have this S as a substrings. Uh, then you can build automaton and then use this automaton to solve your problem, to make some dynamic program, to use some graph algorithms and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, if, so if, if you just need to find a substring, uh, that's an overkill. So you just use this standard KMP algorithm and it's perfectly fine. Don't invent uh, the wheel. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah. Go. Uh, the next thing I want to discuss is the try. Let's solve the following problem. So let's try to build the automaton which accepts just a given fixed number of strings. So you're given some num some fixed set of strings. So you have this set, let's say, let's say A, 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 B, A, A, B, A, A, and something like A, B, B, A, and something like B, A, A. I'm just starting to sort them lexicographically. And B, 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 B. So I'm given some set of strings, S. And you want to find, you want to build an uh, automaton which accepts only this set of strings. Well, usually the automaton for, for the fixed set is pretty simple. So I want to build automaton. Uh, which accepts only strings from this set. That's quite simple, right? So for, F, for each of these strings, we need to have a path from starting state to so some terminal state. Let's build this path. So, Let's start from the first string. So we have the first string. Let's build a path from starting state. So this will be the starting state. So we need a path which have letters A, 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 and B, and ends in terminal state. So we need to have this path. Let's build this path. Now let's take the next string. We need to have a path from starting state to some terminal state which corresponds to this string. So let's try to add this state, this path. So we start from A, so we track A, then we need string A, go here, then we need letter B, so let's use letter B, and then we need A and A. Mm -hmm. Now this automaton accepts first, first two strings. So we accept this string, we accept this string, and so on. Now we just add these uh, strings one by one. Each time we start from the root, well, from the, it's basically a root, but from this starting state. Yeah. And we follow these uh, transitions corresponding to these letters. And if we don't have this transition, we just build a new transition. So we start from here, we need to add A, A B, B, A. So we have A, we don't have B, so we add transition by character B. Then we have B, A, just A, B, and A. Mm 
and so on. Each time you have a new string, you just start from the starting state and add these transitions. So here we have BAA, let's say B A A and B B B oh, okay. B B B B. Yes, if you have no transition, you just make a new node and make a transition to this new node. Okay. Let's go, that's all. Uh, this data structure is called a triaction. Uh, how to how this data structure can be useful? Uh, no, first of all, what you can do, you can build this automaton in linear time by the size of the strings. So, so if the total size of your strings is uh, n, then this automaton will be built in linear time. So the time to build this automaton is just the sum of sizes of all these strings in something like that. <coughs> yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's obviously linear. Yeah, we just follow each, follow, we take each character of, of of each string and make the transition. Each transition makes we make in constant time, so the total time complexity will be linear. Ta-da! It's easy. Uh, how to use it? Uh, one of the simplest use of this data structure is uh, to have some set-like data structure. So, so this automaton actually defines the set of the strings. Yeah. So what you can do is to check if your string is in the set. So what you can do, you're given some string uh, S. Oh, let's have some P. So you can answer questions, for example, you're given some string uh, P. Uh, and the question is, is P belong to this set S? You can answer the question very easily. You just, again, you, you use this automaton. You, just, you take these characters of your string P, start from the starting state, follow this path. If you end in, in, in the terminal state, then your string P is in this set. That's one of the easiest use of this data structure. Or you can make something like map like the, the data structure. So you, you can make map from string to something. Uh, by doing this, you just put in each terminal state, you put the index of this node, something like this. Index or link to something else, anything. So, or values corresponding to this map and so on. So in each terminal state, you put some value and then you can make something like map like data structure. So, so for each, uh, each string corresponds to some value, you put these values in these terminal states, and then when you find, fi want to find a value for, for the given string p, you follow this path, and then you find this value in this final node. Uh, that's another use of this data structure. Uh, this automaton is also very easy to update. So if you have some set, you can easily add a new string to this set. No, let, let's, let's. Uh, well, 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 let's just write on. So you can add the string to the set. Again, if you extend your set by one string, you just make new transitions starting from the starting state and make all transitions which do not exist. Yeah? You can do it in linear time by the size of this string. You can remove the strings. Uh, again, so if you want to remove a string from the set, you just follow this path and then remove all the uh, so you re remove the terminal node, and then just greedily remove everything which uh, doesn't have any edges to the some terminal state. So again, you start from you you, you follow this path, remove the t terminal node, and then follow back, removing everything which doesn't have any outgoing edges. Mm -hmm. So you can add string in linear time, remove string in linear time, and you can find let's see find. And you can find the string in the set in linear time. So it's a uh, very basic the structure to store strings. It's like hash map, but without hashes. 
basically. <laughs> and also have some some interesting properties. For example, uh, if you have some multiple, if you take multiple strings, you again this this automaton is basically a tree. Hmm? How we store transition still in state? Yes, you yes. How to store in in practice? In practice, you you do one of two things. You no, you, you need to express this function delta from uh, v by character c. Yeah? So it will be transitioned from, ver from, 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 from the state v by the character c. Uh, you can do it as a two-dimensional array, but you will need n multiplied by sigma uh, memory. Or you can make a map, something like so. So you can make, so if you have a small number of state or small number of transitions, you can make a map for, e for each for each node, you can make a map from character to, to the transition. And if you if you use hash map, then the total total memory complex will be linear. So if you have if you have a lot of transitions, you can use arrays, just fine. If you have small number of transitions but large alphabet, then you use hash maps. You can you you, you can make hash map from pair to transition to something like that. So. Up to you. So it's, it's, it, it depends on the constraints of your problem, actually. What I was talking about. Ah, yeah. Also, this automaton is a tree. Yeah. So if you look, if you like move your head to, to, to the left. Uh, so this is the root of the tree. These are the leaves of the tree. It's a nice tree. So we can apply all the tree algorithms we know. Uh, let's see. Uh, <clears throat> so this is the tree corresponds to this set of strings. So each vertex of this tree corresponds to some prefix of some of, of some string from this set. For example, <coughs> so, so this node corresponds to this path. This path corresponds to string AAB. So this vertex corresponds to string AAB. String a a b is a prefix of one of these strings. Of of this actual string a a b. Mm -hmm. So uh, this automaton is not only representation of the set of strings, but it's also representation of all possible prefaces of these strings. Mm -hmm. So if you want to calculate something among all possible prefixes of the given set of strings. That's how you explain. It. That's how you represent your strings. So you take your strings, build this tree, and now each vertex of each of this tree will be some prefix of some of these strings. Mm -hmm. And then you can apply all the tree algorithms we discussed in the previous semester. You can even apply some linker trees to this. You don't want to, but you can. Okay. Nice. <clears throat> final part. Uh, final part. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's fine. So the final thing I want to discuss is another is, is the algorithm which uh, we used to analyze that the finite state of matter. It will be two. We'll just two algorithms. Uh, we'll have algorithm how to. What? what, what uh, sorry. <coughs> so what you can do with the finite state automata? You can minimize the automata, and you can check the equal e e equality. Yeah, of two automata of two of two automata or given automata. Uh, first and third. So. Uh, there is no unique way to, to express your given uh, language as an automata. So there may be several different automata, uh, automata which, which corresponds to the same set of strings, right? For example, let's have something like let's go to repeat. So we have A and we have here, let's go B here. 
this. Let's do something like that. A and B and also B. And here I have... No, I want here. No, B is not. It's good enough. Let's consider this automaton. So this is nothing state. What will be the set of strings ac accepted by this automaton? Well, let's see. So what we can do, we can take letter A and go here. And then take letter, take a B plus some more B and then go here. So the string will be A, then B, then some more Bs, so yeah, and then A. Or we can go here, take A, and then A. A, A is also a good. Or we can go here, take B, plus some Bs, and then A. B, 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 something like, and then A. Yeah. Or that's all, right? Yeah. Can we do it shorter? Can, can, can we do the same thing using smaller number of states? Well, let's see, what's, what's going on here? We take letter A or B. Uh, no? Mm, hmm. I believe this this is the minimal possible automaton for this task. So, okay, so, okay. Uh, I want to do this, it says this. I want to do this. No, it's fine. It should look fine. So what happens? We take a or B? Yeah. Then we take some number of Bs and then we have A. So the actually the language we want to express is A or B. I just make a regular expression. Then some number of Bs and then A, right? Yeah. So we have A, A, or A, and then multiple Bs, then A. Or we have B and multiple Bs, and A. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I basically want to express this language. We can do it in the small number of states. We can do it in free states. So we can do it like this. We can start from here, then make the second state make A or B here. Then make a loop here. And then make A here. So this automaton defines the same language as this automaton, but contains smaller number of states. What I want to do is for given automaton, find the smallest representation of, of, of the same language. So I want to I want to build this automaton with the smallest possible number of states such that it accepts the same 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 set of strings. Yeah. That's that's the problem of minimization of the given automaton. Okay.
But for this problem, for example, three states is obviously minim minimal number. For this problem, three states is a minimal possible number of states, right? No, because you cannot do it in two states. In two states, you, you can't express this uh, language. Uh, interesting part. Interesting part is it's always it, 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 it is possible to find this automaton in polynomial time. It's actually in it, you can do it pretty fast. So polynomial is small. Uh, you cannot do it for non-deterministic automata. So if you try and solve, solve the same problem for non-deterministic of its it, it will be and be complete, I believe. Yes, it will be something complete. I'm not sure. It will be NP hard at least. Uh, <clears throat> but I'm, I'm not sure about complete because I, I'm not sure if it is NP. But okay, so it will be NP hard at least. Uh, but in, in uh, for deterministic uh, finite automata, it is it's possible to check if. For example, it's possible to check that two given automata have accept the same set of strings. So it's possible to check the equivalence of these two automata. And it's possible to minimize the number of states. So it's possible to find this, this auto, um, automaton which accepts the given language and contain the minimal possible number of states. And that's what we will do right now. Yeah. So the algorithm is pretty simple. Let, 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 let's see here uh, what, what we did when we move from this automaton to this automaton. We basically just merge two states. So we just take these two states and merge them. Yeah. So we take this state and this state. Mm -hmm. And here we just merge these two states into this one state. That's what we did when we moved from these four states to these three states. Mm -hmm. So this middle state acts the same as these two states combined. And that's what we'll do. Uh, we will try to merge some states together. Uh, and we can merge two states if they are equal. How to say two states are equal? So let's take two states. Let's take some states u. Uh, let's look if we stay in this state you, if, if this is the current state, uh, let's find all the possible strings which we can add to the current position so we will go to some terminal state. So there are some strings which leads you to some terminal state. Let's mark this as S of U. So S of U will be the set of all strings which will be accepted by the automaton if you start in state U. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We will we'll draw this table in a minute. Uh, now, let's, let, let's say that two states are equal if these sets are equal. So, if for two given states uh, the set of all possible strings we can add to this position to uh, go to some terminal vertex, to some terminal state, is the same. We say that these two states are actually equal. No, oh, and here you can easily see that these two states are actually equal. From here, if you want to go here, you can take string A or you take string B something A. And from here, you, you take string B something A, it is the same. Mm -hmm. So the set of strings uh, which leads you from this state to this state is the same as the set of strings which leads you from this state to this state. Congruent, okay. Doesn't matter. You don't like the word equal? I like the word equal. You can use any word you, you, you like. It's not a lecture about, about discrete mathematics. It's a lecture about algorithms. So I'll use the terminology. <laughs> I like. It's not that important. Not that important. Um, 
Nice. So the algorithm will be pretty simple. Uh, we will say that uh, two states are not equal. Okay, uh, the, the, these states are equal if, if these sets are equal. The states are not equal if there is some string. So, so not equal to you. Uh, so there exists some string. Some string S. So S belongs to S of U and S doesn't belong to S of V. Or vice versa, doesn't mean. So there is some string. So if we start from state U and from state V, and we follow the path corresponding to this string, in one situation we will we will go to some non-terminal state, and in another case we'll go to some terminal state. So, so if we follow the same string from state U and state V, and in one case we go to some non-terminal state, and in another case we go to some terminal state, so then these two states are not equal. Cool. <clears throat> so, uh, the algorithm will just find all the pairs of non-equal states. Let me go here. How to find all pairs of non-equal states? Uh, first of all, uh, if you take any terminal state and any non or any non-terminal state and any terminal states, they will be not equal. Yeah. But because if you take empty string here, then you don't accept empty string here, but you accept empty empty string here. So empty string belongs to this set, but doesn't belong to this set. So any pair of uh, non-terminal and terminal state will be a pair of non-equal states. Uh, now, if you have some pair of non-equal states, if u not equal to v, and you have some ingoing edge here by the same character c, so you have the same character c here and c here, then these two states will also be non-equal. Why is it so? Because for, for these two strings, you have this string S. So in one case, you go to non-terminal non -terminal node. In other case, you go to some terminal node. Yeah? So you just add this character C to this string. And you have the string which is different for these two states. So if you go from this state using C plus S, you go to non-terminal states. If you go from here, you take C plus S and go to terminal state. So these two states are also not equal. That's the full plan. So we will start by taking all the pairs of non-terminal and terminal state, and then we will apply this procedure until we find all possible pairs of non-equal states. That's the whole plan. That's the whole plan. Uh, so, okay, let, let, let's do this. So let, let's make a queue. So let's make a queue. And let's make a matrix n by n, which will mark all non-equal states. Non-equal, okay. I'll use word equal because I can. Uh, will be the Boolean matrix. Mm -hmm. Now, let's just mark all possible pairs of non-terminal and terminal states. So we'll iterate for all u mm, in terminal states, for all v uh, non-terminal states, like this, doesn't matter. You can implement it in your favorite language, like you can. And just add all these pairs to this queue. Mm -hmm. well, let's, let's do it in both operations. So let's add and v u and mark them in this array. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, good enough. So I just marked all possible pairs of non-terminal non, non and terminal state. Now I, I, now I will just apply this operation. So I will take some pair of non-equal states, add some character here, and mark these states are not, are not equal. So while uh, not q empty, 
So while I have something in the queue, I will take this pair in the queue. Like this, why not? So I removed some pair from the queue and try to, try to add every letter here. So I will take any, let's say, let's say u prime, this will be v prime. For all u prime such that transition from u prime by letter c, we need to iterate over all letters, right? Let's iterate over all letters. Let's iterate over all states u prime such that transition from u prime by letter c is u. So I, I need to find all ingoing edges to this. Uh, and for all v prime such that transition from v prime by c is v. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in, the, in, in these three loops, I just iterate all pairs of these two edges, right? Uh, 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 uh. Right? That's all. And now we have a pair of non-equal states. So if they are not marked yet, then I will mark them. Sorry, I'm out of space here. Oh. And put them in the queue. Like this. <laughs> okay. That's all. That's the whole plan. So, so again, what we did in this algorithm? Uh, first, we marked all the pairs uh, of non-terminal and terminal state. Then, each time, we try to process some pair of non-equal states. If we have some non-equal states, and then move back one character, so we take some ingoing edge here and some ingoing edge here, which have the same letters here, then these two states will be non-equal. So we mark this pair as non-equal here. If, it's not, if it wasn't marked previously. What is time complexity? That's a perfectly good question. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. It looks scary because here we have three loops. Yeah? So we have three loops here and one more loop here. So we have four loops. Uh, but they, they, it's, it's, actually, it's, it's actually not that scary. So let's, let's see what's going on here. In this outer loop, I will pick each pair only once. Yeah. So each pair will be moved to Q only once. So I will remove it from the Q only once. Uh, so what I'm iterating here. Here I am iterating over all possible pairs of ingoing edges. So for each pair of nodes, I will find all the pairs of ingoing edges which have the same characters here. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. no, it, it looks like it's n cube, right? So, so <laughs> well, right now it actually looks like n power four because I have n square pairs here and may have n square pairs here. So yeah, you may think it, it is an, an n power four, but it's actually n square. Why it's n square? Because here, what I'm doing, I am tracing all possible pairs. So in total, I will, if you take any two edges which contain the same thing. So let's, let's take some edge with letter C and another edge with letter C. Let's take any two transitions with the same letter. I claim that I will iterate all this pair of transitions exactly once, no, no, not more than once. So, so each pair of transitions will be iterated here at most once. Because to iterate this pair of transitions, you need to iterate over this pair of nodes and then iterate over this pair of nodes. So each pair of transitions a pair of transitions only once. 
So what is the total number of pairs of transitions? No, you have linear number of transitions, yeah, because for every for every state you have only one transition for each character. So the possible number of pairs of transitions is n square. Yep. And you, you just take the sum of all these by the number of words. So the total time complexity will be something like n square multiplied by the alphabet. Alphabet square? No, no alphabet is not squared. Yeah. No, just for each character, the sum will be n square. So we just take the sum for all characters, will be n square. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. So that's the, that's all. That's the whole algorithm. Now, how to no, no, let, let, let's prove a little bit. Let's let's prove why, why it actually works. Uh, why we will mark all the non-equivalent states? Why we will mark all the pair of non-equivalent states? Because if two states are not no, 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 not not equivalent, then there is some string s. Mm -hmm. Let's find the shortest possible string s. So for any pair, there is some shortest possible string s. Let's take this string. Then for the next two states, there will be a string one character shorter. Yeah. So if for this two, if these two strings can be distinguished by this, distinguished. Uh, okay, doesn't matter. So if we can, uh, doesn't matter. Uh, so if for these two string can can be separated by the string s. Yeah. So so f you you take this take the smallest string, which uh, acts differently here and here. Uh, and so for these two states, we will have shorter string, mm -hmm. and so on. So again, what will happen in the first iteration? We'll mark all state which can, which have the string of length zero. Each next step, we will have the string of one more character, and so on. So for for each pair of characters that exists some string, so at some point we will find the string because each time we will find the next string. For, for, we go from strings of size n to strings of same size and n plus one, and so on. So if two, two, two states are not equal, then we will find that they are not equal after some number of iterations. Whew. I want to talk about Hopcraft algorithm, but I'm not sure if I have enough time today. Um, before we go next, uh, Yes. So, so, so this is al this algorithm actually minimizes the number of states. Again, how to minimize the number of states in your automata? First, you remove all uh, all non-important states. So you can remove all the states uh, which can't be reached from the starting state, and you remove all the states uh, from which you can't uh, reach the terminal states. So you remove all all unnecessary states. And now you you have some automaton. You run this algorithm. Mark all non-equivalent states. Everything else will be equivalent. So you just merge all equivalent states into one state, like here. These two states will be equivalent, so you just merge them into a single state. And this will be the minimal possible automaton. Why it, why it will be minimal possible? Basically because all this, if you look at these sets, uh, so each state of this automaton corresponds to some set S. And all these sets are necessary in your automaton. Because if you can express this language as some automaton, in this automaton should be states corresponding to these sets. Yeah. So you removed everything unnecessary, and all the states uh, left have different sets. And each of these sets is necessary to define your language. Yeah, something like that. If the set has itself as a condition, if the set has itself as a condition, so it has it. What? Ah, okay. You just. Now. Yeah, that, that's how you minimize number of states. 
Uh, another important problem is to check if two, two, automata, two, two automata equal. So let's say you have, you're given two automata, like first automata, let's say automaton A and automaton B. And you want some algorithm which checks that two given automata have this, corresponds to the same language. So you want the set of strings is the same for these two automata. How to do it? Okay, you, 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 you can solve it. Yeah, let me write the problem. Define mm. the same language. Hmm? Again, it's quite an important problem. You are given you are given two languages. So the like language is an infinite number of strings. So you want to check that two infinite sets are the same. That's that's complicated. But if if these sets can be defined as a state automaton, so that's, that, 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 it can it can be solved. So you're given two automata, and you need to check if they're equal or not. Reduce and see. That, that's one of the solution. Yeah, that's possible. Uh, what you can do is to minimize both automaton automata and check that you will have the same minimal result. You can you can actually easy to see that uh, the minimal uh, possible automaton is unique. So yes, yes. If you minimize both of them, you can check that you you will have the same automata. But it's actually it's actually even simpler. What what you can do is to run the same algorithm. So this algorithm will mark all non-equal states. Yeah. So you just can run the same algorithm on both these automata. Like, like see it, see this pair of automata is, as a single automata, yeah? And run the same procedure. And it will mark you all the pairs of non-equal states. And now you can check that these two starting states are non-equal. If these two starting states are not equal, then these two automata are not equal. Hmm. I want to talk about Hopcraft algorithm. But I'm not sure if I'm. It's maybe a little bit. So I need like 20 more minutes to discuss Hopcraft algorithm. Can we do it? So Hopcraft algorithm does the same thing, but faster. So you can. You can minimize the number of states in finite state automata in a n log n time. So, so that's nice algorithm, but it, it works in, a, in n squared time. You can do the same in n log n time. Okay, let, let, let's do it. Let's do it. So what what will try to do? I, I I will try to do the same thing, but faster. Yeah, it's called the Hopcraft algorithm. So what's the idea? Uh, in this algorithm I just raised, uh, we try to iterate for all possible pairs of non-equal states. Uh, there are n square such pairs, so we need to n square time, but uh, so it's, it's kind of no room for improvement. Uh, what we'll try to do is uh, to find these pairs in batches. So, we'll, so instead of finding every pair of non-equal states, we will just say that uh, we will split all sets of states into some groups of non-equal states. And then we'll split these groups into some smaller groups and so on. Let me show. Let me show. So let's type by following. Uh, we have a set of terminal states and set of non-terminal non states. So 
This will be a set of all possible states. We can split it into halves. We can say we have terminal states and non-terminal states. <laughs> Good enough. And now we do following. We will try to split these groups to even smaller groups. So each time we'll take some group and define just split it into some smaller groups and so on. Then we'll split it into some smaller groups and so on. And so on. So in the end we'll have some uh, um, we have the some, some, some small sets, and these sets will contain some equal states. So, so if two states belong to the same set, uh, they will be equal. If they belong to different states, to, to different sets, they, they are not equal. And the basic operation is like this. Uh, so basic operation. Uh, we have, let's take some set A. If we have set A, what does it mean? It means that everything inside A and everything outside of A is different. So everything inside is not equal to everything outside. Yeah? So like, like this. So we have A and not A. Yeah? So all the states can be split into A and not A. Yeah? And Everything inside A is not equal to everything outside A. So all states here are not equal to all states here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what will be the operation? Uh, let's take the set A and try to find... Oh, 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 oh. Again. We need to find every pair here, find all the ingoing edges by every character and split them into non-equal groups. Yeah? So we'll, we'll do the same thing. Let's take set A, take all ingoing edges by the character C. Mm -hmm. So for some states, if we follow the character C, we will go to, to, to set A. For some other states, we will go to something outside of set A. Now, since A is not equal to not A, then all these states must be not equal to all these states. So, so these states are not equal to these states. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? So what we'll do? We'll see if these characters belong to some sets. So maybe we have some set B, like this, B. So if you have some set B, and from some states in the set B, you follow this character C and go inside A, and for some states you go outside A, then this B should be split into two halves. Okay? So you can split this B and say this set is B1 and this set is B2. That's all. That's a whole operation. Yeah. So again, we take some set A and try to, uh, again, we try to um, like Process all the pairs of non-equal states. One state is inside A, another state is outside A. Okay. We do li like in previous algorithm, we just do it faster, right? We try to process all the pairs inside and outside of A. For each such pair, if we have two states here, one is going inside of A, another going outside of A, these states must be not equal. So we need somehow mark these two states as non-equal states. If they already belong to different sets, we already know they're not, they're not equal. If these two states belong to the same set B, then we need to mark this state as not equal. We will mark this 
pair is not equal just by splitting set B into two halves. So we will split the set B into first half, uh, which are states which go in A, and the second half are states which go outside of A. Uh -huh. That's all. So again, the idea is just do, do the same but first. So we'll, we'll not process these pairs one by one. We'll process the whole pack of pairs. So, so each time we, we want to have all pairs, one state inside, one state outside, find all the consequences here. And for every pair which we know are not equal, we will mark them not equal as <laughs> just splitting the sets into two halves. Mm -hmm. Okay, that may, that, that may be a little bit more complicated, right? Again, again, what we did in previous algorithm, we take some pair of states V and U, and we know they're not equal. And we just process this pair, yeah? So we take some character C, take two and go in H, and mark this. These two states are not, not equal as well. Here we do the same, same thing. We just process these pairs not one by one, but in, in, in a group. So we take the group of pairs, uh, one state is inside this set, another state is outside of this set, and try to process all these pairs. Mm -hmm. And if in some state B, we have some pair of character, some pair of states, so one state uh, going here, another state going here, then these two states must be marked as non-equal. And they mark this pair as non-equal, not just by marking them in, in this big table n by n, but just by splitting this set. So if two states belong to different sets, they are not equal. Mm -hmm. So if they now belong to the same set B, we need to split this set. So we just split this set. So these states go in here, or these states go in here. Yeah, well, you, well yes, yes, we'll apply a few tricks later. Let's just implement this like here. Let's go. So again, we will we'll, we'll make a queue. And we'll put T and not T. Just put it in the queue. Now, uh, while queue is not empty, Not empty. We'll remove some set from the queue. Then we need to, to iterate through all ingoing edges. Let's try. For C in C. So let's write four characters. Let's iterate through all ingoing edges. Oh, okay, okay. So I need to iterate through all states in A and then iterate for all u such that from C is v. So, so this state is v, this state is u. Right? Mm -hmm. It looks scary, I just wrote, wrote free loops. <laughs> but it, it's actually not, it, it, that's not scary. Here I just iterate all ingoing edges, it's, it's, it doesn't, it looks scary, but actually not. So I iterate all states inside this set A, and then follow each ingoing edge here. Yeah. Uh, now, now, I need to find all the sets uh, which was involved in, the, in all this operation. So I, let's make some set, I don't know, Z. So let's add the set empty set. Let's add a uh, set of node u. Mm. Let's make an array of sets. So, so each vertex, so each state knows the state it belongs to. Mm -hmm. So set of u is the set which the node you belongs here. Yeah? Yeah. 
So now I find all the sets which was involved in the base operation. Yes, I need to. I also need to, to know the list of these nodes. <clears throat> okay, let's add the list of these nodes. Let's say L of. Oh. Mm. Okay, let's do it like this. Let's, let's, let's do it like this. Okay, let's, let's, do it. let's say B is the set of node U. Let's add to Z the node B. And then to the list of B, like this. Good enough. I will add the node U. So I kind of need to mark everything which was uh, uh, involved in this operation. Yeah? So for, 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 for this the set A, I will mark all the nodes B, or all the sets B which has nodes which go here. And for each list, I will mark all the nodes which have edge here and so on. Good enough. Mm -hmm. Next. And now I will just try all nodes inside this set B, inside Z, and then try to split this set. For B in Z. <laughs> I use different character in every loop, okay. Let's just wait. Okay. <clears throat> now, I will try all, all sets in, in, in Z. Uh, let's take set B. Let's see if we need to split the set B. So, so uh, let's say B1 equal to L of B, B2 equal to not, uh, everything else. If one of them is empty, I don't need to split anything. If I want to split the set into empty set and something, I don't need to split it. Now, if I want to split it, now there is a trick. Now there is a trick. There are two cases. So if set B is already in Q, so in my Q, I need to process the set B. So, what does mean to process the set B? If you want to process the set B, you want to process all the pairs of nodes, one inside B, another outside of B. Instead of this, I can process sets B1 and B2. So, I can process set B1 and set B2. Mm -hmm. So, I will process all the pairs from B1 outside of B1. So this will be not equal, and this will be not equal. And I will process all pairs between them. They also will be not equal. So if I process B1 and B2 using this thing, I don't need to process B. Mm -hmm. So I can remove B from Q and add B1 and B2 instead. Uh, rep lays B with, uh, with B1. And you also need to update this set array, but you can you can do it. Let's, let's, let's. I will use I, I, I will use some details just for for exercise. Now, so. If B is in the queue, then we will we need to process the set B. But instead of processing set B, we can process B1 and B2. It will make the same result. Yeah? Because again, okay, when you process B, you process all the pairs inside B, outside B. If you process B1 and B2, you will also process all these pairs. And more. If B is the current set, of you, how is not processed yet? It may be processed later, so you, so you 
again, you, you like go from left to right in this. So, so this, this, this is the state of your queue. This state of your queue. You process this, so, so this set is A. And the next state is in the queue. So you process this first set. And then you find this set should be split. Okay, so, so it's, it's working like here. So, so at, at every point of time, you, your, sets, your states will be split into some states. Uh, and you have this state. This is the current state. So you take the state from the queue. And this state B is, is, is still in the queue. So you first process that A. And now you need to split set B. Now, if it is not in the queue, uh, if it is not in the queue, it means we already process it. So we process it before set B, before set A. So we first process set B, remove it from the queue, and then process set A. Well, let's see. If we already process set B. And now we need to process sets B1 and B2. We can process only one of them. Yep. Because by, let, let, let's see. If you process set B and, for example, set B1, then you will process all the pairs from here and you will process all the pairs from here. So you don't need this set B2. So all the pairs of non-equal states will be already processed. So you know these states are not equal to these states, and these states are not equal to these states. So all these pairs of states are already processed. So you need only one of these two sets, B1 or B2. So let's take the minimal of them and put them. We'll put it in the queue. Uh, mm. Like this. That's why you have logarithm. Yeah. That's all. That's the whole whole of algorithm. So again, again, the idea, pretty simple. Uh, we have the queue of sets. Each time we take some set from the queue and try to process it. Process means like this. We take all the ingoing edges. Find if we can, if we need to split some another set. If we need to split some another set, we split it. How to split the set? If this set is in the queue, we just remove the set from the queue and put two other sets to the queue. If if it is not in the queue, it means it means it was processed before. If it was processed before, then we don't need to process both these halves. We just need to process at, uh, at any of them. So let's take the minimal of them and put it back, back in the queue. That's all. That's a whole whole problem. So why is why is then login time? Well, let's see what happens here. Uh, so uh, the whole algorithm is just the sequence of iterations. So first you have two sets. You have like t and not t. So you have this set and this set. So you put them in the queue. Then each time when you do something in the queue, you either remove the set and put two halves of this set to the queue. This operation do, do not change the total number of elements in the queue. And this operation actually decreases the size of the set at least once. So the size of this set uh, will be decreased by it, 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 at least twice. Since we take the minimal of, of, of these two halves, so minim, minim, minimal half have size at, mo, at, at, at most half of the size of the whole set. So we take elements from the queue. So if we remove element, if we remove some set from the queue, 
Then the next time we will put some L in the Q. So let's take some set A. Yeah. If we remove it from the Q, then next time we will put something from this A, we will put one of two halves of this set A. Mm -hmm. So we will put one of these two halves of A. So the total I'm driving will be decreased at least twice. So next time we'll put uh, it some half of it. And so on. So every time we remove something from this from the queue, we will put back at most half of the of the number of elements. Uh -huh. So on the next next on each next iteration we, we, we try to work with the same set, the size of, the size of the set will be decreased at, at least twice. Mm -hmm. That's all. That's all. So, what will be total time complexity? So, initiation. Well, when we try to do something with the set, we try for all ingoing edges. So, the number of ingoing edges for all states is linear. Because the total number of edges in the graph is linear. So, so basically what we do, we, we split all the sets into some groups. We put all these groups in, in, in the queue. Then we remove these sets one by one. And for each set, we iterate for all ingoing, ingoing edges. So, uh, yeah. so what happened? First, you have these two sets in the queue. Now you remove these sets one by one and put some other sets. Yeah? So you remove the first set from, from, from the queue and, for example, split the second set. So now, now you have like, like this. So you remove this and you have this one. Then you remove this and then you split this set so you put one of the halves into set in, in, in the queue and so on. So on the next iteration, uh, so you move this and, for example, split this. Yeah, then you split this and then you remove this and so on. So in the next iteration, you have some 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 other sets in, in the queue. But e each time, if you remove something, then the next set will be twice smaller than the previous set. So the number of such iterations will be no more than log n. So, mm -hmm. so it's, it's like breadth of search, but not exactly. Not exactly, yeah. So we start by, 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 by taking all, all the sets, then we'll take smaller sets, one smaller, and so on. So the maximum number of searches here will be log n. Something like, not exactly, but cl close enough. Uh, and in e each iteration, we take all the sets from the queue, from each set, we look at all, all ingoing edges here. So here, here we look at all ingoing edges for each set, and set is just the like split of all the states in, into in, into non, non, non intersecting. Yeah. So 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 we have some disjoint sets, right? Basically, yeah. And so you iterate all these disjoint sets for each set. You iterate for all ingoing edges. So total number of ingoing edges is the same as total number of edges. So here you you take. Uh, the number of iterations here will be linear by uh, sigma for, for, for each iteration. So the total number of iterations will be, will be this multiplied by the number of iterations. Number of iterations is log n. So the total number will be uh, n log n multiplied by sigma. Okay, it was long. It, it was long lecture. Okay, hope it's good enough. <laughs>